The anointing is an interesting word. The anointing is so powerful. The first of all, the anointing, it means uh, in the Greek is the word where we get the word Christ or Christos. Somebody say Christos. Christos, just like Christ, but Christos. And Christos, it simply, it means the anointed one. It means to be anointed. How many know Jesus was anointed? What was he anointed with? Power of, they, what more specific? Holy Spirit, right? Don't leave the Holy Ghost out. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. So the anointing is always, somebody say always. Somebody shout always. You can do better. Somebody shout always. Always. No. <laughs> always as associated with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you what the anointing is not. I always got to tell what's not. And that's the tough part. You watching something on TV, you watching the Grammys or the Emmys, or you watching somebody sing the Star Spangled Bander, and they're famous, and they hit those notes, and you're like, oh, my God. And you say, whoa, girl, she anointed. Not, that's not the anointing. She gifted. She talented. She can sing, or he can sing, or he can. Mm -mm. The anointing is holy. Am I in the right place? Now, when I say holy, don't let that word spook you. We think of holy. Now, holy means, in its purest form, it means to be separated. So the anointing is something that's unique to the church. It's unique. It comes from God. It doesn't initially come from within. Like, for example, if I, if I, if I could play basketball real good, I used to be pretty good. I was good, man. I was good. I could hoop. Amen. Now, here's the point I'm making. That's, that's what's called innate ability, right? You, you work on it, but it comes from human, right? God blesses you, but that's still, that's human ability. Even singing many times. Now, there, there's an anointing to sing, but you can sing really well. doesn't mean you're anointed. You might be gifted and graced. The anointing is different. You'll never lose your gift, but you can lose the anointing. Because they're two different things. The anointing is, is, the, is the point of contact. The anointing is the power of God. The anointing carries the presence of God. The anointing is consecrated and holy. That's why a lot of people, one of the things you have to understand, when you are anointed to certain things, you also have to, ha there's a level of consecration to keep that anointing fresh. See, I'm anointed as an apostle and a prophet. I can't run the streets. I just can't. Now, as a human, I can't. I can just decide, you know, I ain't doing this. I'm going to run the street. Ooh, but, oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't want to. Here's the thing about it. But with that calling, even though there's gifting to go with it, I can almost prop I can walk in Kroger's and start prophesying. I don't need a praise team. I don't need a keyboard. I don't need nothing. I can prophesy. That's gifting. But the anointing is different. They should work together. But what happens is there's consecration times I spend with God, watch this, to keep the anointing strong. Do you know some people, even though they're anointed, but if they don't stay in God's presence at times, amen, particularly I'm talking about those who minister, whether it be in song, whether it be in preaching, if you truly have an anointing from God, there's a time when you're ministering, God will call you to times to spend time with him. That anointing can get so weak that you operate in gifting, and only an anon another anointed person can tell. They say, oh, yeah, that's all right, but ain't no anointing on that one. Amen. The anointing is special. That's why when you see people come here, they get slain in the spirit of power of God. A lot of people who may be not familiar with that don't realize that's a manifestation that, that deals with the anointing. The anointing deals with God. Somebody say God. You, the anointing deals with another. It's on another level. It's something different. It's, it's not something you're going to get at any other place. You're not going to get it in a store. You're not going to get it. A, you can go to a motivational speaking place, and that's great. And they can do great things. You can, you can go to a business a webinar. You can go to all that kind of stuff, but you will not get the anointing there. The anointing is holy. In other words, it's for God. It's to do God's work. The anointing is never secular. That doesn't mean I can't walk into a secular place and operate and minister and lead people to Jesus, but it's not, it's, you're not anointed to do secular work. Hallelujah. That's why I love it. That's why I love it. Somebody say the anointing. 
Now, the Hebrew word for the anointing is where we get the word uh, Messiah. It's mashak. It means to smear. It means to rub on. So what does that tell us? That in an atmosphere like this, you know, as you all, as we were worshiping the Lord, if you're in a place where someone or people are anointed, that anointing gets on you. That's why some of you sitting here, like sometimes you'll come to serve and you just start crying or you just start shaking or your hands get hot. Why? Because you're in a place that's anointed. You can go to another church, amen, and just, they don't feel a thing. Preach the Bible and everything. There's nothing there. Or they could be very emotional. But the anointing is even deeper than that. Woo. How many sometimes you come in here and all of a sudden you just you start shivering or you feel heat on your hands or some, some type of lip here. See, that, that, that's the anointing. The, the 60 Minutes, Fox, CNN, all them, they'll never understand the anointing. They can't because it's not of this world. Somebody say, it's not of this world. The anointing is not of this world. The anointing comes from, a, comes from another world. It's called heaven. It comes from above. It's an impartation, amen, from Christ. The word Christ also in the Greek, Christos, means anointed and the anointed one. What made Jesus special? Yes, he's the son of God, but he didn't start doing miracle signs and wonders, healing the sick. He didn't do none of that until what? He was anointed. The Bible says, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. We'll get right into it as quick as possible. We've already started, actually. It says in verse 38, even Jesus of Nazareth, amen, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healed all that were pressed of the devil, for God was with him. What did it say? How God anointed him. What was Jesus anointed with? Holy Ghost and power. Y'all keep leaving the Holy Ghost out. What was Jesus anointed with? Holy Ghost and power. Amen. Holy Ghost and power. We, I say Holy Ghost and power because witches can have power. Holy Ghost and power. Am I in the right place today? He was anointed. He was anointed. He was anointed. He was anointed. Many times the anointing can become tangible. In other words, there are times the anointing, you can feel the anointing. Even though we don't live by feelings. Sometimes you don't feel a thing, but it's still the anointing. The anointing is the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. That's why many times, how many of you get slain in the spirit, you get up, you feel light. Why? Because it's the burden, yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God. You have been weighed down and it's been removed. Now you feel light. Jesus said, come and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. <laughs> Hallelujah. The anointing is, is, is God's supercharged power. The anointing, watch this, can expedite you. In other words, you're going to have a whole terrible week. That's why you got to always understand what's happening and never count the anointing for com uh, as common. The anointing, when we come to this place, we expect a move of God. But we should always think of the preciousness of the anointing. Hallelujah. Some people can preach, can sing, can shout. But, but is it always the anointing? Not always. The anointing is very, very unique. There's different anointings in the Bible. But let's deal with the first anointing. There is the inward anointing to every believer. Every believer that's been born again. How many born again people I got in this place? Lift your hand real high. If you are born again, you have an anointing. You have the anointing. I'll call it the believer's anointing. Say the believer's anointing. The believer's anointing, just what it's for, is for those who believe. The Bible says... Uh, for time's sake, where do I want to start? Second Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So what it's saying is that in Christ, God has anointed us. That anointing is the seal of the spirit. In other words, in your heart, in your inner man, there's, there should be a witness in you of your salvation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, very, very powerful. Romans chapter 8, I believe it's verse 16. It says, the, the spirit bears witness with my spirit, amen, that we are the children of God. Somebody say, the spirit bears witness with my spirit, amen, that I'm a child of God. 
Now, this is important. I talked about this last night or yesterday, I mean this morning, but I'm going to emphasize it today. Please, those, because this is important. Now, I believe we're grounded in this church, but I'm going to continue to talk about this. What do you think in your personal life is most important, the anointing within or the anointing upon? The anointing within. But what happens is people see the demonstration of the power of God. They see the prophetic. They see people getting slain in the spirit. They see the power of God, and, and they see that, not understanding that there's a greater anointing for your personal life, which is the, the anointing within. 